So, today is our last lesson in our geometry series. So, for our last lesson, we're just going to do some more proofs. Okay, so we're given that BAD is congruent to CDA. So, BAD, which is this big angle here, is congruent to CDA, which is this big angle here. And angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. And they want us to prove that this angle is congruent to this angle. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is rewrite our given. Angle BAD congruent to angle CDA, angle 1 congruent to angle 4. And that's our given. Okay, so if you remember what we did when we first started learning geometry, we learned this postulate that the measure of this big angle is equal to the measure of each one of these little angles. And same for this one. So the measure of angle BAD is equal to the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2. And in the same step, the measure of angle CDA is equal to the measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 3. And that's our angle addition property. Addition property of angles. Okay. So, since we know that these two angles are congruent, we can say that they have equal measures. Same thing with angle 1 and angle 4 because if congruent then they are also equal. And then using substitution we can get angle measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 equal the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 and that's by substitution because we're going to substitute since we know that these two are equal and we know that this equals this and this <laughs> equals this we can substitute each pair of these angles into this equation so then using our addition property of equality we can get the measure of angle 2 equal to the measure of angle 3 addition property of equality because since we know that this is congruent to this or this equals this in order for this statement to be true, these two have to also be equal. So in our last step, we get angle 2 congruent to angle 3 for the opposite of this. If equals, then they are also congruent. Okay, so we have one more proof we're going to do, and it's using parallelogram. So we know that A, B, C, D is a parallelogram and angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And DF is congruent to EB. So first we're going to rewrite our given. A, B, C, and D parallelogram. Angle 1 congruent to angle 2. DF congruent to EB. And that's our given. Okay. So, since we know that ABCD is a parallelogram, that means that it has opposite sides that are congruent. So, that means we can get this congruent to this piece right here. So, 
So AD is congruent to BC. If parallelogram, then opposite sides are congruent. Okay, so now I can get this angle congruent to this angle because we know it's a parallelogram and parallelogram has have opposite angles who are congruent. So angle A is congruent to angle C. If parallelogram opposite angles congruent. So now we have a side congruent to an angle congruent to an angle. So we can get these two triangles congruent. Triangle DAE congruent to triangle BCF by angle, angle side. And then we can get this congruent to this. DE congruent to BF, if triangles are congruent, their corresponding parts are also congruent. And then finally, since I know that one pair of, I was told one pair of opposite sides are congruent, and we just proved the other pair congruent, we can say that EBFD is a parallelogram if two pairs opposite sides are congruent then it is a parallelogram so like I said this is the last video for our geometry series um, but make sure you check out our other series and next we're gonna do algebra 1